Hello, everybody. Here's the latest update on the weather across the U.S. right now. Uh, I just wanted to start off with saying Happy March to you all, uh, also known as the first day of meteorological spring. Uh, not astronomical spring. We basically base this off of temperatures, temperature patterns. This is what meteorologists base it off of. We can see uh, most states are really starting to warm up this month of March. Uh, if you just examine the average day, daily highs and lows temperatures throughout the year, you'll, uh, you'll notice a pattern. The coldest three months of the year in the northern hemisphere are usually the beginning of December through the end of February, while the most uh, warmest three months are typically the beginning of June through the end of August. Uh, now, these three-month uh, divisions are known as meteorological winter and summer. They also don't line up nearly as well with the astronomical seasons. Uh, you know, for example, winter would, would technically be from December through late March, which isn't really accurate as far as temperatures go. As, uh, you know, sometimes we just say winter is here days before Christmas when um, many parts of the north have already at least had one significant snowfall or cold snap. So meteorological spring starts today, Monday, March 1st, through May 31st. As some of you know, uh, astronomical spring is when is the moment in time when the sun's most direct rays are shining on the equator. Uh, this year, it'll occur on Saturday, March 20th, or early in the morning, at around 5 in the morning. As you can see here, we have a generic uh, sample trace of the average highs, which uh, represents the red line, and the average lows, which represent the blue line. Uh, these are the daily temperatures throughout the year. Coldest three months of the year, known as the meteorological winter, as I said. Uh, the hottest three months, known as meteorological summer. We can see here that the end of December is cut off, as well as the end of uh, March. That would technically be winter. Again, uh, us meteorologists base it off of temperatures. Uh, we'd like to base it off of more accurate uh, calculations. And we'd like to say that winter really starts um, on the 1st of December through the end of February. As well as spring, summer, and fall, you can see a lot of the months cut off. Uh, we basically start on the first of the three months, and then off on the last day of the three months. So, now that that's over with, we can get into the weather right now. Next subject I'm going to be talking about in this video is the science behind El Ninos and La Ninas. Uh, La Nina is actually in place right now, if you didn't know. Uh, it's going to cause some more tornadoes. Uh, they may be more common this year, this spring, uh, due to the La Nina in place across the Midwest. Uh, typically, the tornado potential moves northwestward uh, once the winter months are over with. Uh, it moves into the Plain States, where the potential maximizes here in May, uh, where we have lots of heat, humidity, and wind shear to overlap in uh, this tornado alley, which causes tornadoes that you see in severe weather season, which is in springtime. So what the La Nina is, it's a periodic cooling of waters in the eastern equatorial Pacific, that's known to essentially change uh, seasonal weather patterns throughout the world. Uh, the El Nino, on the other hand, is the warming of these same waters, which leads to different effects on weather patterns. So in La Nina conditions, the strength and placement of the strong winds. So in La Nina conditions, the strength and placement of strong winds um, are favorable, especially uh, less than a mile up in the atmosphere. These winds, they're often called uh, low-level jets, is what they're called. They're used to spawn tornadoes by causing air to tumble. Studies suggest that these winds were stronger over Tornado Alley in La Nina season during April, which considerably, which is actually considerably weaker in El Nino season, and often is much farther east. Studies also show that the energy that allows for the lift needed for a thunderstorm's updraft growth in La Nina is more focused in the southeast, which is also called Dixie Alley, uh, which typically is around March. And then the plain states, which is typically known as Tornado Alley in April. These alleys uh, are locations that are, that are favored for severe weather. What we found out back in January is that the early winter uh, temperature pattern over North America uh, looked more favorable for uh, El Nino than what we would expect from a moderate to strong La Nina. Uh, this unexpected temperature pattern resulted, in from, resulted from shifts in the jet stream that we usually don't see during La Nina season. Uh, Many forecasters and meteorologists often evaluate the large-scale large, large scale atmospheric circulation using pressure about three miles above the Earth's surface. So La Nina can certainly affect uh, Dixie Alley this month, uh, especially southeastern Oklahoma, Arkansas, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee. Many of these states in uh, Dixie Alley is what we call it. And this La Nina's pattern is looking like it will bring uh, much more warmer and drier to the southeast, more wet weather to the 
Ohio Valley area and uh, more much colder weather to the uh, in the northern plains states like North, uh, North Dakota Montana they may not be seeing some warmth here to the next few months uh, much more wetter weather in uh, the northwest around uh, Washington and Oregon which then again every three to four years the Pacific uh, Ocean's water temperature will warm up the east and cool down the west right now we're in a more moderate La Nina with South Pacific waters uh, roughly one degree cooler than average. Doesn't sound like an astronomical amount, but it could be enough to raise our chances for severe weather this spring, especially in Dixie Alley. So we'll mostly be seeing dry weather in the south, but uh, severe storms, tornadoes would be more likely. So to quickly recap, in El Nino, it's when you can see more warmer and enhanced thunderstorm activity uh, in, the, in the eastern Pacific, where you can experience cooler weather and colder temperatures in the ocean in the western Pacific. And El Nino is, uh, is also commonly associated with a ridge in the jet stream in the western U.S. with a trough in a jet stream in the eastern U.S. This typically means uh, we can see less severe weather with a trough in the east. This year we have a La Nina in place, which is an El Nino's counterpart, otherwise known as the global fluctuation in climate patterns. Uh, with La Nina, we have warmer than average water in the western Pacific and colder than average water in the eastern Pacific. This likelihood for storms has a big impact on the jet stream. Jet stream may not look like this all season, uh, but it could certainly revert back to it. We see a trough in the jet stream in the west with a ridge in the jet stream to the east. You know in the middle of this, we can certainly see some severe weather. Uh, the Climate Prediction Center is looking at warmer, te warmer than average temperatures in the south, which is a further chance for, for severe weather in Dixie Alley and Tornado Alley. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this update. I'll see you in the next one.